youngest of the major beef breeds to reach the green pastures and expansive ranges of North America is the Aberdeen Angus, first imported from Scotland in 1873. Ninety years after Shorthorns appeared on American farms, 56 years after Herefords headed westward, and even 24 years after the first Brayman cattle reached this country. A memorial stands as a lasting tribute to a foresighted Scotchman whose faith in the Bonnie Blacks brought them to America, to the memory of George Grant of Victoria, Kansas. The first Aberdeen Angus cattle imported into the United States were brought to this locality by Mr. Grant on May 17, 1873. Erected by American Aberdeen Angus Breeders Association, Kansas Aberdeen Angus Breeders Association, Kansas Livestock Association, Kansas Historical Society, Kansas State Board of Agriculture, Grant descendants, Phillip family, and public-spirited citizens of Ellis County. Back of today's Aberdeen Angus cattle are more than 400 years of constructive breeding toward perfection in beef production. Angus have been black and hornless since the dawn of history. Early developers of the breed did not have to contend with such minor points as color and markings, horn shape, or extremes in size and type. Rather, Angus breeders have been able to concentrate upon the production of a beef animal carrying a greater percentage of edible product of high quality on a quick maturing, fast gaining animal ready for market and at a premium price at the age of 15 months. Because the basis of soil improvement and conservation is a proper balance between cropped land and grazed grasslands, it's difficult to visualize a sound land use program without livestock. Cattle are needed to utilize our forage and to make our land fertile. While handling of the breeding herd varies in different parts of the country, Angus are readily adaptable to all climatic conditions. Thus, grass is probably the most important item in herd management. Here, crimson clover is grown in a southern pecan orchard. Everywhere there appears more interest in growing better pastures and better cattle. Pacific Coast cattle men find irrigated pastures profitable. Water for irrigation may come from wells, streams, or mountain reservoirs. In some sections, sprinkler systems are used, and under these conditions, abundant pastures are grown, which will support many head of cattle. On the dry Gulf Coast ranges, where the grasses grow sparsely, more acres are required per head. But Angus are popular rustlers here, too. More soil-conserving grass crops in the east make a farm herd of beef cattle a labor-saving and profitable venture. Large herds may require a man who rides the pastures daily during calving season. As new calves are found, they're ear-tagged. This information and the identity of the cow are noted. Later, when the herd is brought into headquarters, the calf's ear tag is removed, the calf is tattooed and vaccinated. Other breeders prefer to tattoo their calves in the pasture at calving time. A common practice on farms is the supplementary feeding of beef calves while they're nursing their dams. 
One method used by many Midwestern farmers allows calves to run continually with their mothers by locating a simple creep feeder in the pasture at some spot where cows usually rest near water and shade. Other cattlemen keep the calves away from the cows part of the time, letting the calves nurse twice a day or during the night. If the calves are with their mothers during the night, they're separated in the morning and penned in comfortable quarters where they have access to a creep feeder during the day. Commercial herds still employ the branding iron in the range country, but the calves going through the corral on this northwestern ranch do so without feeling the customary sharp bite of the lariat rope. Modern equipment does the job efficiently and with less labor. The branding, castrating, and vaccinating of these commercial calves is completed in one continuous operation. First, the squirming youngster awaits the branding iron. Vaccination comes next. Then, castration. And this calf is ready to start his trail to America's feedlots and prime stakes. The beginning of a new chapter on America's Angus Trails. From the corrals, the cows and calves move to summer pastures in the mountains. These calves will weigh from 450 to 500 pounds when they return from the mountains at weaning time. The hardy blacks are proving themselves on the range. Their resistance to such range troubles as cancer eye, pink eye, and sunburned conditions has made them increasingly popular. In the southwest, Angus have been used in crossbreeding trials with Brahman cattle. This cross usually results in a black, hornless animal. As an experiment, one western rancher has produced an Angus buffalo cross. The Angus cattle in turn, produced a calf sired by a buffalo bull. Commercial cattlemen have discovered that first calf heifers, when bred to Angus bulls, have less calving trouble. Calves are smaller boned, but make rapid growth and heavier weaning weights. The crossbred calf is usually uniformly marked, predominantly black and polled. There's plenty of room for expansion of the beef cattle industry on America's Angus trails. Methods of breeding and feeding for beef have been improved, just as have other agricultural and industrial methods. More good commercial and purebred herds are needed for the farms and ranches. The beef cow herd will run on pasture a major portion of the year. Where winter quarters are necessary, they need not be costly or elaborate. Cattle may be fed in barns or sheds or outside in pastures and dry lots. Silage, or hay, usually becomes the main feed in the season when pastures are covered by snow or are not making appreciable growth to furnish grazing. When cows and calves at side are wintered on hay, it might be necessary to provide a small amount of grain in addition to the roughage. In some sections, silage provides the winter feed. There are several kinds of temporary and permanent silos. Trench silos frequently hold the feed supply. Silage crops readily grow in every part of the country. Corn is probably the most common crop used for silage. 